Good morning. The lesson from the Old Testament for this morning is found in Isaiah 25, verse 1 through 9, page 505 of the Old Testament in the Pew Bibles. Listen for the word of God. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with a shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The lesson from the New Testament for this morning is found in Matthew 22, verse 1 through 14, page 19 of the New Testament in the Pew Bibles. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized the slaves, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The word of God for the people of God.
safe to say that everyone here has probably been to a wedding, uh, either their own or a guest at another wedding. Good Shepherd has had two weddings in the past few weeks. I found it interesting that the average cost for a wedding is $26,700. And on average, the cost of a wedding reception is between twelve dollars and $14,000. This, to me, is a good argument for elopement. <laughs> Today's New Testament reading was the parable of the wedding feast given by a king for his son. Now much of Matthew's gospel has parables about the kingdom of heaven. He was writing to a largely Jewish audience and the early Christians of his day. He's trying to show them that Jesus was their Messiah. That's the whole point of his gospel. It is useful to consider why Jesus taught in parables. Scholars say that the parable is basically an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Reluctance of the people to receive Jesus' message concerning the kingdom is the reason that he taught in parables. He compared the kingdom of heaven to everyday things in their lives, things that they could understand. They heard the message of the kingdom, but they did not understand, not because God was concealing the truth from them. They did not want to hear. The people who believed in Jesus as the Messiah would understand the parables. Those not interested in receiving Jesus' message, notably the Pharisees and the Israelites, would not understand. A wedding in the time of the New Testament was a sacred and joyful time. It could last a week, including a huge banquet of food and wine. People invited would be dressed in their finest clothes. Something comparable today would be a royal wedding of one of the European monarchies, or say if the President of the United States, if his son or daughter got married and you were invited, this would be comparable. In the parable, Jesus proclaimed the kingdom of heaven is like a wedding banquet, a great feast of food and drink. The king sent out his servants to go out and get the invited guests, who amazingly would not come. He then sent out more to get those invited guests to come to the banquet because all the food for the banquet was prepared on the table. You can imagine something like prime rib and other fine meats and all kinds of wonderful food. The guests ignored the invitation and went off to do other things, such as farm work or running their businesses. Still others attacked the king's servants, beating them or even killing them. And then the king got angry and sent his army to kill those people and burn their city. He then told his servants that the ones that he had originally invited were not worthy to attend. As he had the banquet all prepared and no guests, he once more dispatched his servants out into the city and the countryside everywhere to invite anyone that he could find. They gathered all the people they could get, both good and bad. So the banquet hall was filled. The king came into the hall and he saw a man who was dressed in clothing that was not appropriate to wear to a wedding feast. The king demanded to know how the man was able to get in dressed that way, and the man did not answer him. Then the king had his servants throw him out into the darkness and make sure that he could not get back in. The king in this parable is God, and the son is Jesus Christ. The feast is the kingdom of heaven. The wedding garment is the righteousness of Jesus, and without it, we will miss the wedding feast, in this case, heaven. The guest in the wrong garment is cast into darkness, eternal life without God. Bible scholar Jonathan Bauer writes that this, about this parable, and I'm quoting him here, 
I think Jesus wants us to see three things. First, the gates of the kingdom are open wide. Salvation is not based on ethnicity, education, income, popularity, ministry position, personality, athletic ability, or attractiveness. For this reason, we should be very careful not to assume that the people fit for the kingdom are those that most look like us. Second, though the gates of the kingdom are wide open, the kingdom still has gates that we must enter through. It imposes conditions on us, and we must bear its fruits. Finally, and we mustn't miss this point, the kingdom of God is a feast, and we should act like that. God means to be enjoyed. He is the God of laughter, full bellies, and second helpings. In his presence, David says, there is fullness of joy. Do you believe that? Then come, there's a seat with your name on it. Jesus sent his son into the world, and he was rejected by those who should have accepted him the most, thus bringing judgment on themselves. John says, he came to his own, and his own received him not. As a result, heaven was opened to anyone that would set aside their own righteousness by faith to accept the righteousness God provided in Jesus. Those who reject this gift of salvation and rely on their own good works are doomed to hell for all eternity. Verse 14 sums up, summarizes this whole parable very well. Many are called, but few are chosen. The called ones are the Jewish invitees. The chosen are the Gentile invitees. But Robert, Bishop Robert Barron has explained the parable to us in this way. God's anger in the parable is his desire to set things right. The invitation to the feast is God's universal gift of grace first to the Israelites, and second to the whole world. You come to the feast, but you, wear, you do not wear the proper garment. This insults the king, or God. You must act worthy of the invitation. The proper garment would be said to come in peace and love. Only the chosen ones will be redeemed and enter heaven. Thus, heaven is like a Thanksgiving feast every day. God has invited you to the banquet. You have a seat at the table. Will you attend? Amen.